Joining us right now is CFRA Research Chief Investment Strategist, Sam Stovall. Sam, great to see you. Good to be here, Thanks Maria. so much for joining us. Assess the uh, third quarter reporting season so far. Well, it's pretty much as uh, I think a lot of people had been expecting because each of the prior 30 quarters, we had seen the actual numbers come in better than expectations with the beat rate being close to four percentage points. I think what we're finding right now, however, is we started the quarter thinking we we're going to be down 3.8 percent. Now we're down 2.8 percent. We're sort of sluggish still in that minus territory. Only 57 percent of the 125 sub industries in the S&P 500 have seen an improvement in Q3 estimates, and only a third of them have seen improvements for 2020 numbers. So basically, we're not really getting the kind of overflow, the positive overflow into the fourth quarter and into the next year. Hmm. Are you worried about the revenue growth? Because again, revenue growth, 60% uh, of beaten revenue estimates, but you still have revenue growth based on what we get from Refinitiv up less than expect expectations. So three and a, three and a half percent revenue growth for the quarter so far, which again, you know, you can, we say this all the time, but you can play around with your bottom line numbers, your um, EPS and your earnings. Revenue is harder to fake. Right. Revenue is a lot harder. So three and a half is what uh, we're looking for for this third quarter. 4.3 percent for all of 2019, but then rising to 5.4 percent for next year. So the estimate is, you know, a little bit higher. Um, but usually when you're looking 12 months down the road, analysts are a bit optimistic. Since 2000, they have undershot, uh, I'm sorry, they have overshot by 60% of the time. So meaning 60% of the last 20 years, they were wrong. And they overestimated earnings by 5.2 percentage points. So right now, if we're looking at 9.2% growth for 2020 in terms of earnings, we're looking to get maybe 4% if history holds true, and the revenue number would probably be even lighter. So how big of a deal, we've been talking about this all morning, you know, obviously the, the improvement in the relations between the U.S. and China and mm -hmm. the potential for this trade deal, which we're calling round one. Uh, but this is not a drun, done deal. You right. know, it's not a done deal. The Chinese have pulled back in the past. Do you think Wall Street is too euphoric about the, the possibilities of this happening? Is it priced into the market that we are going to get this trade deal? Because I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that it's going to happen, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's a certainty. I think that uh, Wall Street is hopeful that it is going to become a reality. Uh, prices lead fundamentals, and right now prices are telling us that they expect fundamentals to improve, possibly because of the resolution of the U.S.-China trade disagreement, possibly because of a, a peaceful Brexit so you, to you take place. So you think it's priced in already that this deal is going to happen? M I don't think fully priced in because the market knows that we're one tweet away right. from being tripped up. But I think that maybe it's more like a 60-40 kind of situation where Wall Street is is saying, you know what, we think something will happen that's going to be more positive than negative. They're still fighting over the, yeah. uh, over the enforcement mechanism mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. the plan. I mean, they're still negotiating. If China agrees to it, great. But, you know, that's why they're saying, oh, we're considering not doing those, that increase in tariffs in December. That's right, what China right. wants. Yeah. All right. Hey, Sam, so when we started the uh, third quarter earnings reporting season, we always kick off with the banks. And to me, the biggest surprise on my side was how strong loan demand had shown up and how much better the banks are responding to that. Not just the money center banks, but the, the super regionals and even some of the regionals that we've heard from this week. Is that a good sign, do you think, if we're seeing consumer demand for, and, and corporate demand for loans in the third quarter that perhaps this is the trough quarter and we can actually see things pick up in the fourth quarter? Yes. Well, uh, what's interesting is that I went back uh, about 25 years looking at quarterly uh, earnings changes and usually Usually we had four or five successive quarters of earnings declines. So I was looking for a single quarter of decline, which is what we're anticipating right now. You have to go back to third quarter of 1998 to find that. And so I think many have said that this is similar to 98 when you have the Fed cutting interest rates. We are, you know, long in the tooth in terms of this bull market, but probably not at the very end. With interest rates being lower at this point, um, yeah, we're finding that there's, there's an increase in demand from businesses and consumers, and knowing that every recession was preceded by a double-digit decline in housing starts, and we're still seeing positive housing mm -hmm. starts, that's an indication to me that the recession is still pretty far down and the that's road. That's interest rates. Yeah, right? uh, but rate, rates lower, but yeah. going lower, we're starting off a two-day Fed meeting today. We're going to get another right. 25 basis point cut. The impact. Right. So lower interest rates. Our expectation is that they will cut 
rates by 25 basis points on Wednesday, but then they're, they're stopping. Uh, probably stopping not only for this year, but also we don't have uh, another rate cut built into our economic models for 2020. So if the market is going to be tripped up, maybe it could be in the short term because Wall Street worries, well, wait a minute, well, we're going to stop the stimulus um, because that seems to be the one thing that is supporting us uh, regarding all of this other uncertainty around the globe. You talked about bank lending, and I used this statistic earlier, but in the th uh, three months, July to September, uh, Seven hundred billion dollars in home loans were originated. That was the most in 14 years. And for the year, it looks like we're going to have the best year since before the financial crisis wow. in 2006. Wow. So again, there's still a lot of a tailwind for the economy through these lower rates. You have a steepening of the yield curve finally, where the overnight lending rates below the 10-year. That helps the banks. And by the way, 98, the collapse of long-term capital management, the Russian debt crisis, and an impeachment proceeding. All that was going on, and it does very much look like back to the future here. Yeah, e even as mortgage rates haven't kept up with the short-term rates in terms of going lower. I mean, they're, no, they're, they've dropped, but not to the extent that others have. Just like gas prices, right? Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> don't Oil forget, will like, collapse, and then the retail prices don't come down as fast. <clears throat> yeah. It's not just interest rates, though. You know, that's why this, this, this issue of the increase in the incomes for middle class people, $5,000 more, it means housing is more affordable for people as well. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. So in terms of uh, consumer confidence, feeling that they have a job, that they're going to right. keep that job, that's why when I look not only at housing starts for recessions, I also look to consumer confidence. Traditionally, you have about an average 10% decline year on year. Yeah. Preceding a recession. We'll watch that. Sam, good to see you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sam Stobel.